You might have wondered at one point in your math studies, what's the reason behind the weird rules of fraction multiplication? In this video, I'll try to shed some light on it. I'm going to be using this fraction multiplication example that I've written here, 2 over 5 multiplied by 1 over 3, to explain two of the reasons behind the rules. The rules that you were typically handed down to were worded in the neighborhood of multiply the numerators together, step 1, that means the 2 gets multiplied with the 1, and as an intermediate step it might be written this way to show your work, and the resultant product of this multiplication is written in the numerator position if the fraction cannot be reduced further then that's your final answer and the 5 gets multiplied with the 3 again this is an intermediate step to show your work and 15 if it cannot be reduced any further the fraction is already in lowest terms so that's the end of that multiplication so that's how it looks like what's the reason behind multiplying the tops or the numerators and multiplying the bottoms. Well, reason number one, I can explain with this piece of chocolate here. This chocolate is wrapped in a plastic that's somewhat reflective. Sorry about that, but this is the only way I can handle the chocolate repeatedly and not get stained on my fingers. So, what's important about this chocolate that it has three rows of five squares so the five squares run this way and it's got a top row a middle row and a bottom row so you have three groups of five 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 and five or five groups of three 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 and three if you want to look at the chocolate bar that way so the fraction two over five represents this part here that's broken off this is one fifth of the chocolate two fifths three fifths, four fifths, and five fifths. Three squares on it. If I break the chocolate here vertically, so that's gonna be one fifth. So the broken part here is two fifths of the chocolate. And the fraction multiplication is essentially asking, what is one third of, and I'm replacing purposefully the multiplication sign with the word of, I can write it here. And it's also, notable that it's read backwards from right to left. So what's one-third of two-fifths? Now, let's do this with chocolate. So here is two-fifths of the chocolate broken off already, and one-third of it needs to be calculated. So if this is the amount of chocolate that we're dealing with, because we are only dealing with this two-fifths, we need to divide it into three parts to have one-third. So we need a one-third, two-third, and three-thirds. So I hope that makes sense. To make a third of this, I need to break off these two squares here. I don't know if I can successfully. Okay, yeah, it does, it does work. So that. So this is one-third of two-fifths. I hope this makes sense. So one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds exactly one-third of the small chunk. Now, the answer here, following the rules, is 2 15th. How is 2 15th making sense in this case? The chocolate bar has 15 chocolate squares in it. So that's 1 15th, 2 15th, 3 15th, 4 15th, 5 15th. You get the idea. There are 15 15ths that make a whole. So if I break off one-third, of two-fifths, I'm gonna have two-fifteenths of the whole. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So reason number one, and I can write it here, is because of reality. Very simply, this is how the nature of fraction multiplication works. When you take a fraction of a fraction, you're gonna get even less than you started with, because we're talking about a fraction of a fraction. Okay, I hope that makes sense. When you're fragmenting something further and further and further, you're gonna get less and less and less. And because these are fractions, they relate to a whole. And the whole is expressed here in the denominator, in this case, in 15ths. Okay, so reason number one is reality. The second reason uh, doesn't need the chocolate, so I'm gonna put it there. And the second reason, is based on logic and namely the logic of multiplication and division so the logic of multiplication and division so to explain this a little bit I'm gonna make an example here with whole numbers okay and I'm gonna use the numbers uh, 3 5 and 15 why not so this is how it looks like 
how multiplication and division relate to each other and works together is a unique relationship. So I'm going to start there with whole numbers and I'm going to go to fractions. So 5, I was going to write that, 5 times 3 is 15. That's a multiplication sentence. There's another one that's matching it. 3 times 5 is also 15. So that's how multiplication works. You can, the terms in the multiplication are interchangeable. Where the logic is that there are division statements that match this multiplication. Namely, that if you start with the product of the multiplication and you divide this number with either this one or this one, let me just write it, say 15 divided by 3 in this case, you must get back the, these are factors, so this is factor, this is another factor, and this is product. So if you take the product and you divide it by one of the factors, you must get the other factor. In this case, it's 5. Likewise, same here, 15 gets divided by 5, and that, of course, equals 3. So, same thing. So multiplication and division need to be mirror opposites of each other. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So, that also means that if you grab this chocolate bar example and work with 2 fifteenths being the product and I'm gonna write it somewhere here if you start with 2 over 15 and you multiply it with this factor here sorry divide it by that factor 1 over 3 you must get 2 fifths let's see if we do get 2 fifths now how do we do fraction division fraction division has its own rules and it says that you take the first number you flip the second number upside down for another weird reason and the division symbol here gets replaced with a multiplication symbol and then you continue as a multiplication 2 by 3 is 6 and 1 by 15 is 15 6 over 15 is uh, the f answer for this division problem but 6 is divisible by 3 and 15 is divisible by 3 so if I Right, divide by 3 there and divide by 3 there. I'm just reducing this fraction to lowest terms. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. All right, the final answer here, 2 over 5, is the same as the other factor that we had when we started the multiplication. So division here checks out the multiplication that was done in the first place. So what I'm saying is how division that had a logic the internal logic of multiplication and division relate to each other it works with the steps of fraction multiplication however these fraction multiplication humankind arrived to it is a valid way of multiplying fractions because it works if you do the division the opposite of it it will get you multiply or dividing this number by this number will get you that number and likewise multi dividing this number by that number will get you that number now finally i want to point out that these numbers here of course are whole numbers but they can also be fractions at the same time because every whole number is a fraction of uh, 1, so 3 over 1 multiplied by 5 over 1 who should equal 15 over 1. If you multiply 3 by 5 is 15 and 1 by 1 is 1. So even though these examples here are whole numbers but they are also fraction examples at the same time. So those are two reasons behind the weird rules of fraction multiplications because reality needs to agree with whatever rules mathematicians or people invent for making math work it must reflect reality and this is what reality tells us that if you take a fraction of a fraction you're gonna get uh, an even smaller chunk that you started with and they relate to each other in this mathematical manner which also coincides with the internal logic of how multiplication and division relate to each other